It's a joy that uh, our JYF group, our Junior Youth Fellowship, grades 3 through 5, will leave for camp this afternoon and uh, have a great week of summer camp. I just got home last night We're from a week with our 6th through 8th grade uh, campers this past week, and, and we had just a, a fantastic week. Margo was down there, and she got up and came to church today. Proud of you. Uh, and, uh, so... Uh, and then, of course, it's a joy uh, July 4th this week to uh, celebrate the independence of our country and the freedoms that we have in this place, freedoms to, to gather here together and worship this morning. And so I'm sure there are things on your hearts and minds. <coughs> and my allergies are going crazy since I came back up here. So um, I'm going to give us a few moments of silent prayer, and then I'll have a prayer for us together. Let's pray. <coughs> Almighty God, we are thankful. Thankful for this place, for this time, for this hour of worship where we can gather together to be your church. We ask that you would speak through Sean today the message that you've given him to open our eyes and our ears to understand you more fully, God. We ask that your Holy Spirit would move in this place, that you would continue the work that you've already begun in us, helping us to grow and to become the people you created us to be. Oh God, we thank you uh, that we are not alone in our struggles with these uh, concerns that we've lifted up this day, but those that still remain heavy on our hearts, some that we haven't shared with anyone else. God, we thank you that you are a God who knows us and who loves us, who can meet us right where we are. So God, we ask that you would... Uh, Forgive us for the times when we fall short. When we don't live up to, to being the people that you asked us to be. When we don't love and forgive. When we don't serve and share in ways that you have given us an example of through Jesus our Lord. When we hurt those around us by the things we say and do or even by our inaction. God, we ask your forgiveness. But even more than that, God, we long to be changed. We long to, to be the people that you see us as. God, we know that you created us for so much more. And so we ask that you would, would make us and mold us in the image of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. That you would inspire us and work through us, speak through us. That all that we do and all that we say might draw others closer to you and into a relationship with you. Oh God, we thank you for this country, for the freedoms that we enjoy here. For we know that you gave us ultimate freedom. Freedom to make our own decisions and our own choices. And so God, today we choose to worship you. To give you our praise and to give you all the glory. Because you and you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. was gone 
He needed someone strong to get him through the throng. His friends, they raised the roof. They had to get through somehow. They knew the healer, Jesus, was in the house. Tear off your roof of fear. Tear off your roof of doubt. Lay down your problems. Jesus is in the house. Tear off your roof of fear. It's time to lay it down. It's going to be all right. Jesus is in the house. You're overwhelmed with care. No answers anywhere. Burdens so hard to bear. You need someone to share. There are no options left. By faith, just take the step now. It's going to be all right. Jesus is in the house. Tear off your roof of fear. Tear off your roof of doubt. Lay down your problems. Jesus is in the house. Tear off your roof of pain. It's time to lay it down. It's going to be all right. Jesus is in the house. He has the answers. He has all power. He is the master. He's here this very hour. He has the answers. He has all power. He is the master. He's here this very hour. Tear off your roof of fear. Tear off your roof of doubt. Lay down your problems. Jesus is in the house. Tear off your roof of pain. It's time to lay it all down. It's going to be all right. Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Jesus is in the house. Amen. I invite you to open your Bible and turn to the book of Luke, chapter 1, with me, and uh, we'll read from there together, beginning at verse 26. Um, I, I began a sermon series last Sunday called Insights from a Holy Land, and, and just uh, pulling a few things that kind of really touched my heart or struck me as we walked through those places where Jesus was or where the Israelites were. And so if it feels a little odd to be talking about the birth of Christ in June and July, well, sorry, but, uh, but this just hit me and spoke to me as if we were supposed to talk about this. So listen to Luke uh, chapter 1 beginning at verse 26. This is what it says there. It says, in the sixth month, and meaning the sixth month, of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. He sent him to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And Gabriel came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now, now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son and you will give him the name Jesus. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, 
has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who is said to be barren. For nothing, nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Would you pray with me? Oh God, we pray for an encounter today. God, send your angels, come yourself to us, speak words of life. God, in this room, in this space, may this be a holy, hallowed ground. May this be an air that is full of your presence. God, whisper your messages into our ears today and bring us hope. God, speak to us and transform us that we could be like you today. We pray for a birth, for, for a new thing to come in this space and in ourselves. We open ourselves to you, O oh God, in hopes of what you will do in us. And then send us out, O oh God, as your people. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ and all of God's people pray. And together we say, amen, amen. Recently, there was a group of, of scientists who actually discovered how to create life out of the dust of the earth. Just like God did it back in Genesis, these, these scientists happened upon this great discovery and they were, they were so overwhelmed and overpleased with themselves and their, their newfound discovery that, that these the scientists, they decided, you know what, let's, let's challenge God. We could challenge God. Let's just see who can make a better human being. Well, God was game for it, and so they, they got the Holy Spirit to be the judge, to be the arbiter between them, and, and the contest began with haste. Well, the scientists, they started gathering some of the, the richest, most fertile soil that they could find, and they started molding it into the image of a human being. And that's when God said, whoa, 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 hold, hold on just a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Just what do you think you're doing? The scientists looked at each other and they said, well, we're, we're about to make the perfect human being. God said, yeah, get your own dirt. <laughs> you know, sometimes, sometimes we think we are the beginning. That we are the, the creators, that the, we are these, these great doers, these great actors. We, sometimes we were pleased with what we think we can do as human beings, our, our knowledge and our wisdom and our, our abilities, but really, really we're playing with God's dirt. Now, I've been struck with this over this past month. For instance, the, 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 this moment in Scripture, this moment in time that we just read about right here, this, this marks the initiation of a totally new move of God, something new and radical that is, that is coming and happening, that God is breaking into the world and doing something that has never been done before. History is changing. Creation is changing. The trajectory of human history and the world is changing because of the birth of of this tiny child that's being placed in Mary's womb. Life is going to be different. He's the son of the Most High. He's the, the son of God. He is, in fact, God coming in the flesh. And in this moment, God himself is, is crawling into Mary's womb, crawling into the womb of this woman that he created with his own hands in order to be born into our world. What an amazing thing to birth Jesus Christ into creation. And I remember when, when each of my three kids were born and, and in that moment, I was overwhelmed by the feeling that this is nothing short of a miracle. It's an absolute miracle that, that new life could come. And now some days it's a miracle that they're allowed to remain in this world. But I've been, I've been struck by this. Here in Luke 126, 
Through Gabriel, God begins to announce the birth of Jesus. But way back in Genesis 1.26, again 1.26, God announces, let us make humankind in our image. In Genesis 1.27, God creates humankind, male and female, God creates them. Then in Luke 1.27, we're introduced to a created male named Joseph and a created female named Mary. In Genesis 1.28, God blesses them. In Luke 1.28, Gabriel says, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. What a blessing. Luke 1.31, Gabriel says, You will conceive and you will bear a son. Give him the name Jesus. Genesis 1.31, it says, God saw everything that he made, and indeed it was very good. Amen? Now, the Bible wasn't written with chapter and verse numbers. The Bible was not written the way the, the, those little numbers in your Bible, they didn't come. They were actually added in the 1200s and the 1500s. 1200s for the chapters and 1500s for the verse numbers. So that tells me something. It tells me this. It tells me that, that the writers did not tailor the Bible this way. God did it. That God was wanting to show us exactly what was going on here with Mary, exactly what was going on here with us. And just for the cherry on top, on which day of creation did God create humankind? Sixth day of creation creates human beings. Which month of Elizabeth's pregnancy does the angel Gabriel show up to Mary? Sixth. It says it not once, but twice in this text. You see, upon... I don't know about you, but I I find it amazing. I find it amazing how God is working, but but what started it all for me was, was a visit to a town in Galilee called Nazareth. A visit to the home of a young girl pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. You see, upon and around this home, we, we as human beings, we've erected a magnificent church, a basilica, a, a church that marks the site where, where Mary and Gabriel encountered each other. It's called the Basilica of the Annunciation, and, and inside, the basilica is shaped like a massive lily opening from the heaven down to earth. If you walk in, the top floor there is, is it's beautiful. It's, there are decorations and stained glass. There are mosaics all the way around from different countries of the world depicting Mary and, and, and sometimes Jesus. And, and in the center, in the center of this, you can look up and you see the dome that's shaped like an actual lily. And if you go to the center there, you can also look down through the octagonal floor, through the hole there to the floors below. But, but it gets even cooler because if you go downstairs into the lower floor, the floor below, it's darker and more subdued. Things are dominated by the gray of the concrete that is that, is that lily coming on down through the pillars. And then you can descend down even one more floor to the very bottom. And you can see a very simple cave. A very simple grotto that's said to be the home of Mary. Where Gabriel appeared to this young girl where she was overshadowed by God and became pregnant with Jesus. So let me show you these pictures one more time just really quickly. The the top floor. This beauty and everything, all, all the lights shining in and looking up into the dome and seeing up higher where, where the heavens are. Go ahead. The computer's slow, I guess. There it is. And then go down to where it's darker into the second floor below and then descend even down one more set of stairs to the cave which you see there, which is supposedly the home of Mary when she was growing up. You know, as I visited this holy site, I was struck by how this grand basilica in the shape of a lily, how it reminded me of a womb. A womb that was opening from the splendor of heaven all the way down into a simple cave. All the way down into a simple cave with a simple teenage girl in a simple town on the hard and broken planet Earth. 
And to me, it was almost as if God was descending from the perfect majesty of heaven, from the beauty of of having everything as it should be and as it ought to go, Ah, coming down into the poverty of humanity, coming down into the poverty of myself, coming down because of love for young women and young men living in the brokenness of this life in order to birth a whole new direction for me and for all of humankind. I mean, sure, God was, God was placing a child in the womb of Mary, but, but what was really happening here is that the womb of God was creating again. The womb of God was, was opening again. The womb of God was giving birth again. The womb of God was, was bringing life into our world again. Now, I ask y'all to forgive a little bit of my mansplaining here, but, but I was struck. I was struck by how we were standing in this place, standing on the site where, where God was gestationally preparing a new thing in creation, where all of this began. And, and even through the pain of bearing this child, even through the struggles of pregnancy, even though it may be unimaginably difficult on the mother, that God still chose to carry and bring new life into creation. The pain of birthing new life through a cross. The tearing of flesh, the spilling of blood as new life enters the world. It must have felt like death to bring children into the presence of their heavenly parent who loves them. That's what God was doing here for you and for me. And we... We didn't even notice it. We couldn't even see it. But the incredible, the the unmatchable patience of God, God who could have fixed everything immediately, God who could have waved his hands and taken care of it instantaneously, God who could heal the world with just a stroke, a bat of his eye and a word of his mouth, God still patiently worked in creation and in us like a pregnancy over months and months and months of waiting and preparation. God was bringing this new thing about within his creation. And all the while we thought we were doing such incredible things. We thought we were working diligently at our jobs and creating stuff for the world to be proud of, creating things to put our names on there and say, look what we did, simply molding the dirt that we'd been given. But what if this wasn't about Mary? What if this wasn't about us? What if this was about God? Enduring every pain and every struggle in order to bring life to you and to me. Because I believe God has shown up again today. Today. In the sixth month, the month of June. God has come down from the perfection of heaven to the brokenness of creation. God has met us in our deepest need and in our deepest longing and hoping for something to break through, to come and to understand what's going on in me and why we are so broken. God has come down to the males and the females that God created, the ones that have been made in his own image. God has shown up to bless, to say I'm with you, to say you're not alone in this life. And then God has come to bear life. New life that you and I so desperately long for, that we so desperately need, that life that, that, that changes the drabness of the gray into the beautiful colors of life, that makes this space like that above. And children of God, it will be very, very good. Amen.